Hey, welcome once again. So this is how the front of the N Trip X um, station looks. So I got mine from GNS Electronics. It was quite fast. I think I ordered on Friday and on on Monday morning the package was already delivered to me. So I'm in Germany, so probably that's why it came quite fast. Now um, on the front side you have basically only two connectors, right? So the first one is for the wireless um, antenna. So the wireless antenna doesn't come already installed, at least in my case, but it's quite easy to install. You're just gonna it's just a screw cap, right? You're just gonna screw this onto the left side of the of the connector, and the one on the right is where you connect your GNS or your satellite antenna. Now, in between the two adapters, you have three um, status lights. So the first one is, is for wireless. So when the device is connected to a stable um, wireless or internet connection, it's gonna you're gonna have a stable green light. So what the manual from the device also says is that the brightness of the lights gives an indication of how strong the connectivity between the device and your router is. So the brighter the light, the the more stronger the connection is in my case i didn't have to do anything i just placed it at one place and the light was bright and i could get a good connectivity so i didn't see any reason to be moving the device around to get a brighter light the led in the middle is basically a status light so this gives you an indication of um, what the status of the station is so for instance if the device is well connected to your wi-fi network and also connected to the ono core server you have the light changing from white to blue two times to green two times and again to white then to blue two times and to green two times so it's like a circle so it, it, it just keeps rotating in this in this sequence and this gives you an indication that you have a good connection to your wi-fi and also you have a good connection to the onokoi server so the final led light um, has a stable green color when the gns receiver has a position fix at the back of the device is also um, a USB-C connector where you connect a USB cable and basically connect the device to a USB adapter so that you have a power supply for the device as well. So here, um, the power supply wasn't delivered um, in my package, So, but technically um, every modern phone charger should be able to provide um, enough power to, to, to power the device on. After you have connected the wireless antenna, you have connected your satellite cable to the satellite adapter and also you have plugged in your USB cable to the USB adapter. You can basically power on the device and then we move on to the Onokoi page to start a configuration. To assess the Onokoi page, you're going to have to go to console.onokoi.com slash explorer. So here, um, the prerequisite here is that you have already requested access to the Onokoi server. So you have to request and then in my case, the access was provided in less than 24 hours. So this was pretty quick. Now, um, a prerequisite also to start up or to connect your station to the Onokoi server in order to receive rewards. So here, for instance, I connected with the Phantom wallet. Um, you need to have a little bit of Solana in your wallet, very, very little, not much, in order to be able to pay the transaction fees connecting your wallet to the Onokoi server. To begin with, I'm going to connect my wallet to the Onokoi server. To do this on the top right section, you're going to see connect wallet. And here there are several options of wallet that you would use or that you could use. So here I'm going to have, I'm going to use a phantom wallet because I already have this set up. So if you do not know how to set up a phantom wallet, um, you could find a YouTube tutorial that would instruct you on how to do so. So that you can also add this as a Google Chrome extension to your Google Chrome to make the connection of your phantom wallet to the onokoi server pretty quick now um the reason why i would like to do this connection of my my wallet to the onokoi server first is that so that it makes the whole pro registration process um easy when you select your wallet you see a pop-up notification on the right section asking you to confirm the transaction now your wallet is um, successfully connected to your phantom Ono sorry to your onokoi server now the next stage is to set up your station Still on the Onokoi console, you're going to click on reference station and then select and trip credentials and then click on add new credential. There are only two fields that you would have to fill yourself. That is the password and the description. Now for the credential, this is automatically generated by the Onokoi server. The password, you would be whatever password that you'd, you would like to use to secure the connection of your station to the Onokoi server and for the description you can put in anything that you would like to have now very very important is that you have to click on register credential on blockchain in order to receive your rewards and this is why i did a connection of the wallets um, to the Onokoi server first before i started setting up the credentials 
My tip here would be to copy and save the password that you'll be using here on a notepad somewhere or in a Word document because you, it's going to be very easy to copy paste the password when you are setting up the, the station on the station's back end. Your phantom wallet is now going to ask for permission for you to confirm this transaction because we would like to connect your phantom wallet um, to the Onokoi server. So here as you can see um, you need to have a little bit of Solana but its fees are very very little. Yeah, so you need about 0.00332 Sol and that's why I asked you to have some Solana in your wallet before starting with the setup. If you agree, all you have to do is to confirm the transaction and then you will see a notification waiting for transaction to be signed. If everything goes through successfully, you would see a notification saying that the stream is registered. Now on the credentials page, now you have um, a new credential. You have the time that you created the credential. You have a description, your password, etc, etc, etc. In the next stage, we're going to go to the back end of the Ntrip station itself. And here I would also advise to copy the credentials that was automatically generated for you. And you can paste this in the same notepad or Word document where you paste your you pasted your password in the first step. When the Ntrip X is being set up for the first time, it creates its own hotspot. So you need to go to your wireless connections and look for a wireless network that is called Ntrip X. You need to now go into your web browser and type in the IP address 192.168.4.1 and this should open the back end of the Ntrip X station. The back end of the station um, is made up of four major blocks. So the first block is called the Wi-Fi and this is where you put in the credentials of your Wi-Fi network. So SSID is going to be what the name of your Wi-Fi network is and then the password of course, it's going to be the password of your wireless network. Now, in the second block, um, it's called admin this page. So here, so currently, you realize that when you wanted to come into this back end, you just put in the IP address and you didn't need to put in any other um, username or password in order to access this. Now, here, my strong recommendation, also the recommendation from the manufacturer is to put in, to, to secure this page by putting the username and password in order to prevent hackers from coming into the back end and changing whatever configuration that they would like to play with. Now, the third um, block is called the Wi-Fi hotspot. And so here, for instance, when you wanted to connect to the to the back end of the miner, you just went into your wireless connection and selected the Ntrip X miner or the Ntrip X station, and you didn't need to put in any password, right? So this is where it is recommended to put in a password so that if anyone wants to come into the back end through a Wi-Fi network of the hotspots itself or of the station itself, they would require a security key. Now here there is an extra thing that the manufacturer recommends. I'll come back to, to this when we are doing the connection. In the last step, this is called the Ntrip server. And this is where you're going to put in the credentials that you, you generated or that we generated on the first stage on the console of Onokoi in order to allow the station to be able to connect to the Onokoi server. So I put in my Wi-Fi um, username and password and now I'm populating the admin page. So for me, I use the same username and the password that I have as a credentials so that it's easy for me to remember what username I used and what password I used for the backend as well. But feel free to use any username and password that you use, but I chose to use these so that it's just easy because I have so many things running so that I remember easily what is the username and the password to the back end of the station. I'm going to skip the third block here, which is called a Wi-Fi hotspot. I'll come back to this later. So in the end trip server, that is the last block, um, you're going to have to enable this field by clicking on the box there so just click on it for it to to turn blue and then when this is done you're going to populate the four fields that you have down there for the host and port you're going to put in service.onokoi.com and as you can see the port was pre-populated this is 2101 and for the mount point name you can use any name that you want but here as well for just ease of crap for me i just use the same credentials that i use for the username now the username and the password here is also very very important what is going to be the username the username is going to be the username that was or the credentials that was automatically generated for us on the onokoi console and the password is going to be the password that we created at the beginning that's why i also said again that copy and paste this now when you are done just click on submit 
and then you see that you would get a notification that the Entrip X is going to have to restart to to apply the new configuration. And what that means is that it's going to try to connect to your Wi-Fi network, and it's also going to try to connect to the Onokoi server. And here, just click reload. So if you, so in my case, for instance, my Wi-Fi network is set up in such a way that if a new device connected to the Wi-Fi network, I see this immediately. But if this is not the case for you, you can just go into your router setting and see if a new device is added to be sure that the device is, is connected to your to your internet. The LED lights in front of the device are quite helpful in troubleshooting as well. So if your, so for instance, the first light is for the Wi-Fi. So if your device is successfully connected to a Wi-Fi network, um, you would see a stable green light. And like the device manufacturer said, um, the intensity of the light gives an indication of how strongly that connection between the device and your Wi-Fi network is. So they said, for instance, you could be moving up the device around so you get a stable light, but of course do not do this when the satellite antenna is connected to it. In my case, um, I had um, a very good connection at the start, so I didn't see any reason to be moving the device around in order to get a strong signal. Now, I would skip the middle lights for now, I'll come back to this soon. Um, the third light is also just showing stable green. This means that your device has um, a GNSS um, position fix. Now the middle light is, is the very interesting light so you can see it alternates between white, um, green, so white, blue and green. And the white blinks once, um, the blue blinks twice and the green blinks twice and then it goes on in sort of a cycle. Now all this means is that the device is um, successfully connected to a Wi-Fi network and also to the Onokoi server. If you check all the status lights in front of your device and you are sure that your device is well connected to the internet and hopefully um, also connected to the Onokoi server, I would like to bring you to this GNS um, electronics guide, quick guide from the manufacturer themselves. And here, this is where I mentioned that I skipped the third point, um, the third block on the back end, and this is the reason why I did so, just so that I can explain this better to you. So what a manufacturer recommends, as you can see here, it is strongly advisable to disable the built-in access point after the device has been successfully connected to a Wi-Fi network configuring via WPS. So if you do this by WPS, it disables automatically. But then if you did this by a manual configuration over the web interface, then it does not do so. So in my case, for instance, I didn't do the connection with the VPS, a WPS, I did this by manually configuring the device to the Wi-Fi networks and that's why you have to come back to the device back end and disable this feature. Now, um, in order to come to the device back end, you would have to go into your router settings and find out what the IP address of the device is. So once your device is connected to your wireless network, your router would assign a unique IP address for the device. So all you have to do is to put in this unique IP address in your browser and then Remember, we put in a username and a password when we're setting up the device for the first time. So you're going to put in the username and the password that you 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 designated, that you designated to. So you just put in paste, copy paste um, username and password, and then this brings you to the device back end. Now, what we're going to focus on is this TED block here. So you can see um, that this is enabled, and when you go to the device instructions from the manufacturer they say that it's strongly advisable to disable this picture so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go and change because it's still open i would like to put a password on it so i'm going to click on so here i just chose the recommended password and here i'm going to put a very complex password that i have so i'm going to paste in my password and then i'm going to first click on submit for the changes to take effect. So it said that the device would have to be restarted to apply the new configuration, that's okay. So just click reload. So now the device um, restarted very quickly. And then, as I said, they recommend that, so now we have secured the interface, right? We have secured the wireless network. So they recommend that we go in there and we disable this feature. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna just click on this button here to disable the feature and then I'm going to click on submit again. So the device would have to reload again to um, apply the changes. Okay, so now the device has successfully loaded. As you can see, all the three, all the options are enabled apart from the Wi Fi hotspot, which was recommended to be disabled. 
So congratulations for making it this far. I know that tutorial is a bit um, long, but I really wanted to take my time to explain all the things that you really understand what you're doing. So um, prerequisite, we have um, successfully set up our wireless network. We've connected a device to our wireless network. We've successfully um, connected, set up the device. The device is connected to your satellite cable or the LED lights in front of the device are working um, correctly as they should be. So just come onto the console um, of the Onokoi. So this is the same address that I gave to you at the beginning. And here, click on Reference Station. So when you click on Reference Station, now you would see that you have the credentials. This was pre-populated for us. We have um, a mount point. So the mount point might be empty in your case because your, your station might not have been validated yet. So when I set up the device for the first time, um, the validation here was unvalidated because it takes some time for the for the server or for the console or for the Onokoi team to validate your your station. So they need to look at what the signal is, the signal good and stuff like that to change the status from unvalidated to validated. So when when I was checking out from their Discord server, they say that this could take um, from 24 hours to 36 or so hours or so. But um, in my case, this was very fast. So this was a change from an unvalidated state to a validated state in lead. It, I think it was less than one day, if I recall. So it, this was very fast. And then you would also see a mount point designated once this is validated. So the mount point is a three code. So the first three letters, I think, is the country. And then the second three letters is the province in which you are. And the last four letters are, so the last three are the for the, I think it's a town that you are located in. And then in my case, I have a number also um, designated to it. Now, congratulations once again on setting up your miner. So as you can see, uh, mine was connected and validated. And I think I connected my wallet as well. And today I saw that I already have some Bono balance. So for you to know the Bono, so the, the token itself would be called Ono. The B Ono or the Bono means, the B there just means better. So currently the device is still on, the, the station is still on the testnet or the Ono Koi server is still on the testnet and that's why you'll be receiving this Bono balance. So if you do not start seeing your balance after your device is validated, do not get concerned. In my case, I think it took about two days before I started seeing my balance. Now, thanks a lot um, for staying this long to go through the tutorial. I hope you are successful in setting up your station as well. If you do not, if you do have any questions, um, put us in the comment section. I'll be very happy to help you. Um, if I'm able to help you, I can also always refer you to the Discord channel of the Onokoi um, team. And they are very, very, very helpful in helping you solve the problems that you might encounter in setting up your device. Congratulations and see you in the next video.